hosted by the by the UPU uh, International Bureau on the topic of regulatory responses to the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, my name is uh, Bruno Basalisco. I'm a director at Copenhagen Economics. I am pleased for the opportunity to support as a moderator this uh, uh, very uh, expert uh, panel that we have today on the topic of quality of service tensions ahead. Today, we're joined by uh, two uh, distinguished experts bringing uh, forward a regulator's perspective and a designated operator's perspective. And um, as a first contribution uh, today, we will have uh, Joachim Levin from the uh, Swedish PTS, Post and Telecom uh, Authority, who has served uh, over his uh, distinguished career as economist, as expert advisor in, 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 in regulation, and also as, uh, um, as uh, 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 responsibility with the, uh, as appointed expert in the, uh, with the Ministry of Infrastructure in Sweden in the official government inquiry on the financing of the Universal Postal Service. He came as a PhD from the Stockholm School of, uh, of, uh, of Economics, where he has also served as lecturer and researcher. Um, okay, the floor is yours. We welcome your, your uh, insights to kick off the, the conversation today on this topic and then to join the panel in the, in the broader conversation later on. Thank you for joining us today. A real pleasure. Over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Bruno. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, here. Uh, and we are going to take some look at, from the Swedish perspective, what we have seen. Uh, perhaps we have a bit, we have some you know, quite specific situation, I would say. Uh, uh, so uh, it, it's perhaps not so generalizable to all other countries, but uh, uh, we will start from that. We can take next slide. Well, when it comes to the general quality on the postal service during the pandemic, it was surprisingly quite uh, unaffected uh, during the pandemic year. Uh, our main uh, quality target uh, for priority letter mail, uh, which is measured on uh, that, that it should be uh, by the receiver in two days, 95% uh, should be uh, delivered in that time. Uh, and the target actually increased a bit uh, to over 98%, uh, the, the result. Uh, increased a bit to 98%. Uh, and that was uh, perhaps quite surprising, but it also shows that the, the general uh, postal system uh, worked very well uh, in Sweden uh, in this case. And one reason may of course be that we did not have a total lockdown. So major uh, societal functions were working quite well during the time. But of course, uh, high numbers of uh, sick absence and, and so on on personnel did of course cause problems. Uh, but uh, mostly on where local uh, delivery offices and so on. When it comes to the postal, uh, this, the, the, the post offices, or in most cases in Sweden, they are uh, uh, run by third parties. They had uh, very high level of uh, keeping it on the normal uh, service. There were a few that had te temporarily reduced opening hours. And the, the numbers that were closed were very few, just uh, I think they, they were uh, uh, under 1% of all these service points were affected at any point in time. So uh, that was uh, a good result. Uh, but of course, th there were some personnel issues, but, but we saw that we had, of course, uh, intense communications with the operator. 
that they had a very fast adaptation of hiring extra personnel to put in. And those affected local postal uh, delivery offices. Uh, so they could in fact cope with it quite well. However, as uh, I guess almost every country, we saw uh, quite uh, substantive, su substantive uh, effects on uh, cross-border mail, B both uh, the possibility to send out to uh, quite a different, different number of countries that we, we couldn't send out to, and also delays on incoming cross-border mail. Uh, but that is, a, of course, a, a, a very uh, important thing to discuss in this uh, type of context that we are today within the UPU, because it's hard for a single regulator to solve the problems of the overall uh, international global postal system. We can go on to the next slide. Uh, the pandemic have had a quite dramatic effect on uh, the market. Uh, however, uh, however the, the effect on letter mail uh, is, it was a rec record high um, uh, decrease, uh, almost 12% down in, in volumes. However, uh, as you see from the, uh, the graphics, uh, they were quite large the preceding year. So we have a very high level of digitalization going on uh, right now in Sweden. So what, what actually is the effect from the pandemic on the letter volumes are uh, quite, quite hard to isolate. Uh, however, the, the important thing is the, the change in consumer behavior, I think. Uh, even though we had a decrease in volumes of 12% on letters, uh, there was only a very slight decrease in revenues. And that comes because the small packets segment uh, had a very large increase du during the pandemic, many people really uh, got on with uh, buying things through e-commerce channels. Uh, and that had a major impact on the, the finance, financial uh, outcome of the, the operators. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and, and what we see is that the pandemic has really uh, speeding up the shift from uh, letter mail uh, as the most important thing in postal business to the, the parcel and delivery of goods. And we see domestically we had 58% of the revenues coming from parcels and small packets. And the e-commerce boom was, uh, yeah, it was really high. It, we had totally, uh, total uh, increase of in 40% uh, uh, during 2020. And we also see that uh, uh, the e-commerce has a really, is, is really important uh, part of the postal business. 70% uh, of the parcels, if we include the small packets, or uh, originated from e-commerce. So uh, that is a, a, a very important observation, I would say. Uh, next slide, please. So how does this affect how we should look at things uh, in the future? Well, quality assurance, Quality of service measures have, well, at least in Europe, I would say, been very focused on uh, measuring the letter mail segment, where we have different types of targets, and they have not been so uh, well developed in the parcel segment. 
So should this market shift that we really see happening uh, after the pandemic also reflect how we perform, perform the quality, service, quality of service measurements? Uh, yeah, I think that that could be a way to go. And that has also been uh, identified, uh, identified as an important thing in, in the European Regulatory Group for Postal Services, the ERGP, that has a, uh, a work stream on that for next year, a feasibility study of quality of service indicators for the parcel market. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that is quite timely, I think. Uh, one thing in, that is also quite clear that, uh, is that cons consumers, at least on, when they buy things domestically uh, through e-commerce, almost all the different operators have uh, different types of tracking applications that you can have in your mobile phone and so on to, so that you can follow actually your ordered uh, parcels and small packets uh, so, so that the transparency for the consumer are already uh, quite good so so you have have to have that in mind when when you think of uh, if you're going to impose some specific call to service targets or, uh, or something like that on also on the parcel side of the market. Uh, and also, of course, how do we deal with the uh, implications for cross-border service that I don't have so much to say on, but I just want to put that question to the audience, really. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joachim, for kicking off the discussion with this uh, interesting evidence and uh, your initial interpretation. I'm sure you have more comments and insights. And thanks for leaving a little bit uh, for later for the discussion for the uh, the uh, audience. Um, I would now like, and it's my pleasure to uh, give the floor to uh, Hans Blickman. Hans is from the um, Dutch designated operator PostNL. He has a distinguished career there. Um, his, uh, his academic starting point is an, of education in planning, economics, and law. I cannot think of anything better for this topic and, and many of the responsibilities that, uh, that you have held, uh, Hans. Uh, uh, Hans has been, um, he's, he's now a public affairs advisor, so he has the opportunity to, uh, uh, to be the counterpart to the regulatory authority on this dossier. Is also convener on CEN on customers, product, and uh, and services uh, uh, with responsibility of including of, of regulations like EN uh, 13850, and is also chairman of the Central Works Council with PostNL. So many different functions that help connect uh, and, and and inform your experience. You've served as a product developer, as quality of service manager, and management of mail operations. So we will really benefit from your insights today on this topic. The floor is yours, Hans. Thanks for your initial remarks now and for the broader input in the panel. Over to you, thank you. Thank you, Bruno, for giving me the floor. I'll try to share my screen. Oh, I cannot, I cannot share. We can see, we can see the uh, slide. So I think maybe it is the colleagues from uh, UPU. Uh, I guess we have the next slides, next slide coming up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I try to give you some insights about the uh, situation of the pandemic in the Netherlands. And the first thing I think this uh, uh, was said about Sweden as well, that we had a lot of difficulties, of course, but also we could uh, have an uninterrupted service provision during the pandemic, domestically, but also internationally, uh, which might give uh, reason for an inter interesting uh, discussion afterwards. Uh, because we changed to, uh, for export, we changed to uh, freight flights, and I think that was quite successful. Uh, as of the market, uh, the same as in Sweden applies in the Netherlands, we had a spectacular growth of e-commerce. In the parcel part, it was up to 35%. In the mail, we uh, had a different story, uh, accelerated volume decline of development volumes, but we had an increase in greeting cards. So consumer to consumers were, were, was up to 8%, but overall uh, we were down in letter mail volume of 
7.2%. Uh, I must say that it was very, despite it being a very difficult period for everybody in the country, uh, our uh, employees uh, got a lot of appreciation from the public. And that was really, uh, you see in Dutch, uh, where you see the hearts, etc. So uh, I think it's, uh, and I experienced this myself as I, I also delivered mail uh, and parcels during the period. Uh, I experienced that myself as well. Uh, next slide, please. We have um, three periods in the in the uh, pandemic. First, we had um, uh, quite a level of panic. Uh, everything was quite new for everybody, and we had a very high level of absence locally, going up to 25, 40%, which is clearly disruptive. And of course, we had to adjust the workplace to the 1.5 meter workplace. Uh, and uh, all kinds of measures were, I come to back to it later, had to be implemented all of a sudden. And of course, this took time, et cetera. And here you see in the, in the, in the, the photo, it's on parcel uh, mm -hmm. processing. You see a coughing uh, uh, screen between the workers. Then we had an, a quite easy summer. And then after the summer, uh, I think that was every, everywhere. Uh, uh, difficult periods, uh, second lockdown, where uh, locations of us, uh, according to the level of contamination, were uh, labeled orange or red. And further restrictions impairing uh, the working inside these buildings occurred. And we had this inspection by health authorities, some of which were disruptive as well for the process as well. Uh, the third phase was a, was a, a further lockdown. Um, and it, you could say in short that uh, Christmas visit, the Christmas, normal Christmas was suspended and people started to send each other uh, enormously much more cards than, uh, than uh, than, than, than we experienced. And this also, because it's very difficult to handle, was disruptive in the process. Next slide, please. Well, what was then the effect on the quality of service? Um, first, I have to say that the domestic target, target in the postal law in the Netherlands is comparatively high. It's 95% and it's on the overnight service. So posted today, delivered tomorrow, which is diff different than in Sweden. And this this, this uh, is also the explanation why there was disruption uh, on the system uh, in the Netherlands, because if you have to, if you get the mail today, you have to deliver tomorrow, the maneuverability is quite limited. Uh, the score not corrected for COVID uh, in 2020 was slightly below the target, 94.3. Um, we had clear disruptions, which are already mentioned, but no grave interruptions of the general service level. Uh, our slogan in that time was, we go out so you can stay in. On the right, you see the measures. It's, it's the contactless delivery and the one and a half meter sanitation, washing your hands, etc. Next slide, please. This is the adver advertisement in the paper we had. So we go out so you can stay in. And I think it speaks for itself. You see the, the mail deliverer and the parcel deliverer on the slide. Next slide, please. Well, now the regulatory part of my presentation. Um, of course, this unique situation of the pandemic uh, created a very, very special situation um, uh, in our relationship with the regulator. So when, when the situation broke out, we uh, immediately got into contact with each other and we agreed to keep a log of incidents to see if there was a force majeure situation ahead. But this was quite difficult to do actually because the pandemic had a more creeping effect. So uh, pinpointing uh, exact uh, incidents and saying, well, this day we couldn't deliver because of COVID was quite hard to do, uh, but it was clear that it's because of the uh, absence, uh, because of the unusual mail flow, et cetera, that because of the impaired capacity and 
the impaired, impaired maneuverability, there were, were effects. There were some discussions with the accountant and we, we got to the conclusion that, um, uh, well, pinpointing and uh, removing data from the survey with the approval of an accountant would not be easy. And yet also there was a common understanding that the pandemic had negative effects, especially on the D plus one service, and that it was clearly beyond control personnel and therefore in some, some form force majeure. Next slide, please. Well, we continued our dialogue, uh, how to report, yeah, how to report on this uh, issue. And we, um, the conclusion was that uh, personnel reported a non-corrected result, non-corrected for COVID impact. That was the 94.3%. And that we uh, also produced an addendum to describe possible effects. And these uh, possible effects were calculated by the survey agency, GFP, the independent service uh, agency, in three scenarios. First, we saw some regional effects in the start phase. Maybe, you know, Holland, in, in the old days, the South was more Catholic, the North more Protestant, and the South, there is a big uh, uh, um, uh, tradition of carnival. And this was a super spreader effect super spreader uh, 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 occasion for the pandemic. And there was been big panic in the South. A lot of uh, people got ill. And then uh, we saw quality of service in those regions plummet to 88%. And in the North where, where there was not, this, this event did not take place. Uh, it was still 95%, uh, something like that. Um, then the two other, uh, scenarios which are uh, uh, regarded by, by the regulator as more serious scenarios. That was uh, deleting incidents uh, from the survey as recorded in the log. So you take out certain, certain uh, test letters, so to speak. And the third, deleting uh, the weeks with the most profound COVID-19 effects, which came also, which also were uh, found in the log itself see what, what, what the big effects were. And this led to, um, uh, if, if, you, if you take this into account, um, then uh, the quality of service level gets in the neighborhood of 95%. Well, the assessment of the regulator currently is still pending. So we have to wait what they, will, what they think about this all. Uh, next slide, please. I have um, made some extra slides. And I would summarize this one uh, because in, in the EN 3850, the European norm on how to measure the quality of service, there, there is um, um, a description of how to use uh, force majeure and how to deal with the regulator in this case. However, uh, it's also clear that the exact pinpointing of the effect is quite difficult. If, uh, if I look at the Netherlands, you, may, you, might, you might know that half of the population lives below sea level. So if, if one of the dikes breaks, then of course you can't deliver mail in certain areas in certain periods. That's clear. So you, you take out these uh, measurements in that period in that, for that area. But given the fact that a pandemic is, has a more creeping effect, uh, it's, it's it's quite difficult to use this exact uh, approach. And maybe we can discuss on that uh, later on more. So this is basically my, basically my presentation. So I'll give uh, the word back to you, Bruno. Thank you. I think we've covered many interesting aspects that will help feed into the discussion in the, in the broader panel broader uh, focus of the panel now. Uh, we have seen by combined virtue of these two presentations, how the COVID-19 lockdowns and related restrictions, social uh, restrictions have increased. The demand of some postal and delivery services decreased others and that, you know, this pressure has put postal operators, um, you know, making them operate at peak performance for several weeks, also adapting to the new safety requirements. And uh, we've also uh, seen, and this was discussion in the, discussed in the last webinar, the incorporation of additional services that were necessary to support the pandemic response. So I will keep this question as a, as a follow-up question for, for later on. Um, 
the um, the first question I would like to put to both panelists to share um, reflections on are about the nature of adaptation and first of all about the the processes to reach an understanding about what type of adaptation is needed in exceptional circumstances such as such as this one so um, perhaps I will give the, um, the floor first back to Joachim and then you Hans thinking about your experience on your two different perspectives uh, of course also two different countries and different pandemic situations and government approach and, and, and restriction approaches. But what, uh, what, uh, what have you learned from the process of interacting with the counterpart, you know, so regulator with designated operator and vice versa, when a situation like this emerges? What, uh, what have, you, have, you, have you learned from this? Uh, Joachim. Yeah, thank you, Bruno. Uh, I think one main lesson is that it is really important to quite uh, rapidly uh, work out some uh, uh, plan for communication that, that, that you, uh, Hans mentioned that they had uh, this uh, form of uh, recording incidents and so on. So there, there must be established a, 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 uh, designated people in the in the two uh, in the regulator and in the in the operator uh, that that uh, quite uh, uh, continuously can share information about the situation um, that, and and that worked quite well of course in the in, in the first few weeks or first month that everybody was so. It was quite uh, well, as Hans mentioned, there were a bit of a panic, but uh, of course, that, that was the case also in Sweden because we, we, we were not really uh, prepared to, to, to all uh, possible consequences when it all started. But uh, when we started get, getting information, we quite soon got uh, more. Uh, on top of the situation and, and so that uh, most things were working quite well. Thank you. Thank you, Akim. Over to you, uh, Hans, uh, the answer to the same question in, in uh, overall lessons learned from the interaction with your counterpart at the regulator. Yes. Uh, uh, first thing I would say in the beginning, the concern was how to continue the service. Eh? And that was also on, on the part of, of the regulator because everybody knew that we had people had to stay at home etc and that uh, a nationwide delivery uh, might be very important for people to allow functioning at home in, in their work situation and whatever so that was the first thing first things first um, and furthermore I, I would like to to um, support what mr levine said uh, it's very important to have a a dialogue because a pandemic situation like this the last time was 1919 the spanish flu um, nobody ever in the world has experienced a grave pandemic like this for a long time so you have to invent you have to invent your whole uh, situation anew so to speak and our focus was on uh, continuing the service while maintaining uh, safety for the workers that everything was directed to that and uh, i must say that um uh, still our dialogue is, of course is ongoing on this issue uh but i think uh, it's very important to inform each other and to uh, make people aware on every side of the of the, of the defense so to speak <laughs> what's happening and uh, trying to figure out a uh, a way um to deal with each other and then the uniqueness of the situation demands uh new answers to, to all questions I would say. one uh, thank you thank you hans one question i would like to put forward to follow up is on uh, the specifics of you know the outcome of the dialogues and adaptation uh, i think um, maybe i start with you hans on this one i mean thinking about the regulators have the regulators and other government authorities adapted targets you know the fact or 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 fines or other processes from not meeting targets 
to account for the unique situation. I think you know you've hinted to some you know some of the processes and some of the submissions you've made with the with the regulator. Do you know if this adaptation you know has been accepted or what what um, what to expect uh, on uh, on the, the the ability of the current rules and even the status and concept of, of, of force majeure, but you know, in general, the, the possibility for adaptation to actually work in a context like this one. What can you say to that? Well, it's difficult, and in, in our we are still in, in, <laughs> in waiting the assessment of the uh, regulator. Uh, the targets are in the law, so uh, the targets are the targets. Uh, <laughs> I know from other countries that uh, some. Uh, Adjustments to the measurements were allowed. Mm. So, 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 but that's what I say in the Netherlands. The, the discussion is still ongoing, so I can't can't really comment on, on that. But I I've heard from my counterparts uh, that in some countries, um, uh, so not the targets were not uh, uh, set differently, but uh, there were some adaptations allowed in the survey, mm. which which is more or less. What's also stated in the European norm that you, in a force majeure situation, you you can do that in in dialogue with the regulator. Mm. Joachim, could I ask you the similar question uh, to you from your perspective, uh, what you've seen, but also you've seen more broadly in the ERGP group? What uh, what can you share at this point? Uh, yeah, I, well, in Sweden we we of course thought about these things, but we never really got to a situation where we ha had to make uh, any uh, adjustments of, of the of, of the uh, existing uh, regulations so so uh, as it was working but but uh, as Hans mentioned uh, I have also heard from my ERGP colleagues that uh, the the way to work with this the, the, the is the force measure uh, concept uh, and, and that have, has uh, worked quite well as I have um, been told uh, by my colleagues. Uh, it, it is it has enough flexibility to to to, to cover this situation, and that it was uh, that's the main uh, lesson I think about that. Uh, one question I would like to tie into this is about thinking about the broader role of the post. We've heard in the first webinar about the role of the post as a provider uh, of essential services and, and the, um, the possibilities and opportunities for the post to find new activities related to supporting resilience, supporting the, 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 the uh, existing and, 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 and new um, citizen needs via various uh, activities. And uh, and so this could take the form of additional services that were necessary to support the pandemic response. Maybe, maybe I start uh, with you, uh, Hans. Um, do you, uh, to what extent has this been relevant in your, in, in your uh, case, um, adjustments or additional services that you know, were necessary to support the pandemic uh, response? And do these interfere in any way or, or complement the existing services that are in scope for quality of service regulation. Does quality of service regulation get impacted in, in any way by this? Mm, well, actually, I don't. I don't think too much. Huh? We, 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 the, the main um, experience was, of course, the enormous increase in in parcel uh, mm -hmm. e-commerce e-commerce related uh, services. Uh, everybody was at home, so it was easy to uh, to, uh, to get the parcels to to the receiver. Uh, of course, some some um, adjustments had to be made to the way of delivery and yeah, the contactless delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, but essentially, I think the services which were developed previously functioned and they worked. Uh, uh, main thing I would say is that people had to rely more on e-commerce service. To keep on working at home and and, and, and keep on functioning, um, so they discovered uh, uh, more than in all the times how well e-commerce can work for them. <laughs> but it's more a commercial effect and a more uh, uh, effect of habits, I would say, mm -hmm. than uh, actually 
doing something completely different in the service. Hmm. I don't know if that's not the answer you're looking for, but. <laughs> Uh, no, I think it is it is certainly relevant, and also you know country by country the situation would be different in the type of uh, activities. In fact, I was thinking of the parcel angle uh, for a, for a later question, so I think we will we will connect to this uh, soon. Yeah, uh, one, one thing maybe, maybe one thing a bit more the deliveries please. to the home addresses, especially in a pandemic. Yes, yes, and of course we've seen in recent years a lot of trend of consumers you know trading off and substituting delivering to the uh, work address. As a way to achieve the practicality yeah. and, uh, and in a sense, or a, post, or, or a PUDO, but you know, in a way to, in a sense, increase the density in the delivery activity in a way that is convenient for the consumer as well. So to both obtain a higher density, drop density, for the for the for the delivery, but also to fit into the life the life of the consumer. Um, the, the question I wanted to, to pass on to you, uh, Joachim, was related similarly here to, um, first of all, to what extent uh, in discussions in, in, in your country, in Sweden, have there been conversations about new roles, new um, additional services that, that, um, that the post can take and that can have a relevance, a broader relevance to resilience, to support, to the type of you know, state aims in, 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 you know, both in terms of pandemic response and, you know, broader social, social performance. And also the UPU has done a, a broad research on, on the role of, of postal social services. So that was the first question to you. And again, whether there were any overlaps in how the, the postal designated operator organizes itself and any impacts on regulation on, on the quality of service perspective. Uh, thank you. Uh... One thing uh, uh, that, that came up was uh, from a uh, societal point of view, really, uh, if the postal services could be used for uh, sending these, uh, uh, what, what's it called, the, the, when they test people if they had, had the virus or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that came up in, in, in the beginning of, of, of the uh, pandemic. Uh, I don't, but how, uh, I don't think, uh, however, that the normal postal services uh, could really cope with the uh, uh, time. Uh, uh, Time demands for, for that services, so, so they were more more uh, turned over to express services and those types of needs. Uh, however, another the thing that that we have really seen is that uh, several operators uh, dealing with parcels are, are have had took the opportunity to roll out and. New um, uh, networks of parcel uh, stations, and they obviously had planned that uh, even before the pandemic. But uh, I think they speeded up that process a lot, and, mm -hmm. and several new entrants ha have received quite a lot of, uh, uh, not a lot, but they, they have entered the market. So to say, and also the, the, the post node that the USP has also increased their number of parcel stations. As they saw, then pe people needed more. Not the, the traditional way in Sweden to to uh, to deliver parcels has been mm -hmm. that, that the, the recipient goes to uh, an outlet or a post office to pick up the parcels, but the, the home delivery. Uh, is really uh, has been uh, increasing a lot, and we have seen that on the small packets uh, mm -hmm. increase as well. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the need for getting things more smoothly to, to home to, to people uh, are a very important aspect, I think. Mm -hmm. One follow-up here on the technical level, benefiting from your combined expertise, Joachim Hans. If we think about the traditional 
letter mail uh, standards. And of course, you've mentioned Hans, the importance of delivery to home in time of pandemic. Um, but we also heard about the, the growing importance of, of um, uh, pickup points such as parcel, parcel uh, stations, parcel lockers. Um, thinking about the experience of measuring traditional letter mail quality of service and the auditing process and the sampling process, how does the um, a world, a scenario in which consumers receive uh, maybe uh, some uh, letter mail or some form uh, in combination with, uh, you know, with parcels or with the use of, of pickup stations, do, do the current systems and, and, and processes to measure quality of service uh, allow for that? Do they, how do they incorporate the possibility that also for letter mail, which traditionally goes home, you know, uh, the, the consumers also have now a broader variety of, of, of uh, interaction points with the delivery, given what they have learned with parcel processes. Are, are the quality of service standards uh, able and processes able to uh, measure and monitor what happens if, if, if consumers start receiving letter mail also at the pickup uh, points? Maybe Hans, I start with you and uh, go back to Joachim, if that's okay. Yeah, uh, well, the, the, traditionally, uh, quality of service measurement is, is more focused to letters. And mm -hmm. it's focus, it's, it's, it's uh, done with uh, test let letters, done by an uh, end to end test letters. And if you look at parcels, uh, we had this discussion within SEN, of course, many times uh, before. Uh, what can we do about measurement of the parcel flows? And there are two aspects. Uh, I think, uh, which are important. First, uh, using test parcels is quite expensive. Um, and um, most parcel flows, you have track and trace. Uh, so on, not, for, not from an end-to-end -end perspective, but from a, uh, well, uh, event, tracking, tracking event to another tracking event level, you can produce quality of service uh, data. Uh, so the approach um, is you maybe you can use those track and trace events in a quality of service survey. And actually within SEN, we have made a, a technical specification concerning that. Uh, there is some discussion about the harmonization of track and trace events within SEN, because if you would li like to would like to have a norm how to measure the quality of service of parcels. You must, of course, have uh, certain parameters, parameters which are the same in all, in all EU countries. And uh, that means that where, do you, where are these track and trace events placed? And that's, that's an important question. And they, they differ from company to company. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about end to end, it's very clear. It's, it's the, the sender who uh, posts an item and the receiver who receives it. But that's that's a bit of a diff difficult in the parcel environment, and a lot of these measurements uh, also had to do something with the monopoly-like monopoly situation uh, of the uh, letter ma mail market, where you actually needed regulatory interventions uh, to 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 help the quality of service, whereas in uh, the parcel market there is a lot of competition, so and you have this track and trace. So is there really a need for uh, these regulatory measures? That's an open question. <laughs> Very much open. And uh, then the ball goes to you, uh, Joachim, both on the um, question of can the systems uh, apply if uh, letter mail uh, starts being delivered also in, in pickup points and um, about the broader the broader open question on on the the role and necessity of a quality of service regulation and monitoring on on the parcel side how how do you see this well I, i'm not uh, a super expert on the, the measurement uh, models uh, and, uh, I, I have a quite um, i have i have some insights anyway but uh, i don't think that the current um, uh, method methodology used could uh, solve the problem with if you start to deliver uh, uh, letters to parcel uh, lockers uh, but, but, but I, I agree with uh, what Hans really said I don't have much to add but uh, 
uh, I know, as I said in, in my initial uh, speak, uh, that uh, we are going to look at these issues in the ERGP the coming year. And it's, well, before we have done that, I don't have much uh, to share, really. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have one um, last question from my side of those prepared in advance before opening up to the wider audience uh, questions in the chat. We have received some questions there and uh, welcome questions from, from all. Um, and my um, question is thinking about the experience of the pandemic and reflections based on the pandemic, such as what you've discussed uh, today. Has as this, as, as the pandemic allowed for reflections regarding what quality of service requirements are most relevant to ensure that user needs are, are met. So uh, what have we learned from it? Maybe you've started going in that territory now, uh, Joachim and, and Hans, uh, but uh, can you be more explicit? What, what do you think, what lessons learned are we, uh, have, we, have we learned uh, thanks to the tough circumstances of the, of the pandemic? Um, Hans, uh, to you first. Yes, um, I would say that it's uh, one of the lessons is that reliance, reliance of the service is very important. Especially if people really rely on uh, companies like like my company to keep on functioning at home, mm -hmm. but speed. So it's 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 reliance and frequency, but speed uh, in our system currently it's it's the day, the day plus one service which is measured, and I think it's it's the importance it has is more on reliance than only speed. If I, if I make myself clear, uh, it's clear that, that the pandemic um, has impaired the capacity uh, process uh, capacity. So you could expect some leniency. Um, but um, yeah, I, I would I would say the importance of of the, of that 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 you have a reliance reliable system. But every, every day there is a delivery, that's, that's very important. And that's, uh, I think, it's one of the parts which kept uh, the society functioning. But the, the, the sheer focus on D plus one, uh, so 95%, mm, I, I'm, not sh I'm not sure if that's the right focus. So, but reliance, of the service, um, you should you should be able to re rely on the service. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hans. Joachim, over to you. Reliance, reliability over speed. Is one more important than the other? Should the regulator regulation be refocused on, on one and also on the letters versus parcels uh, question? Uh, how does this work? Yeah, yeah. well, uh, we have uh, in Sweden already gone one step away from the D plus one uh, measurements to the D plus two, then that is now the basic service in, in, in the universal service. Uh, and, big, and there has been some investigations in, in this issue a few years ago. Uh, and we, are all, we agree that uh, reliance, uh, to, that, uh, that the mail comes um, with a high certainty, search, search, certainty is is more important than than, than the speed, uh, and that is also the the view of uh, a majority of the uh, users that, that that we have surveyed. So um, I, 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 I so uh, I think we might be uh, quite. Uh, okay with measuring the D plus two for the cam for the coming years as uh, so that could be a, uh, a reasonable level uh, but it is of course very important to uh, make sure that and the cert that every every uh, item is delivered uh, within uh, well, not so, so many days. So certainty is um, more important than speed, but um, 
the, and this the measurement system should cover that. Uh, when it comes to uh, power cells, well, uh, uh, yeah, I think Hans had some uh, uh, insights there with uh, the difference in competition and also that transparency for the users are higher with these uh, different uh, uh, trace, track and trace applications. That are available. So, so the need for uh, regulation on that is perhaps uh, lower, I would say. Uh, but of course, uh, it, 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 as the pandemic, pandemic has shown, it, it is important uh, that we can rely on these services as well. So, because we are changing our behavior and working more from home. I think that will be uh, quite clear in Sweden that um, many organizations change their way of working and, and people will work more from home even after the pandemic than they did before. And that will uh, uh, make uh, it's important to to have uh, a very good coverage of services to home premises. Thank you. Let me now tap into the uh, insights from the um, chat questions. Thank you, Jose, for uh, submitting for submitting questions and. Um, there is a, a, a question that is very concrete. So I think that's the easiest one to, to launch now, which is testing the, the hypothesis whether quality targets were achieved because park cell volumes were capped by many operators to a certain limit maximum. Maybe I can start with you, Joachim, thinking about your, your overview from your GP and other, other insights uh, as the role of caps by, you know, by many operators this does this actually help uh, achieve a quality of service in in in, uh, in parcels, for example? Uh, I I don't get the question. But what do you say? Caps? On... Caps. I mean, if the operators just didn't take the the, the, the ah. demand in the first place, so also to be able okay. to to achieve that reliability, for example, is that <laughs> is that an explanation of um, the, the the results? Well, uh, perhaps I, I, I don't I don't have an answer to that one. I'm sorry. Maybe I pass the ball to you, Hans. I guess uh, the hidden um, the hidden um, uh, um, basis of this question is that, of course, there are uh, some operators subject to universal service obligations, and some products pro product service to universal service obligations, and others which are which are not. And so the role of caps can also differ by operator and products, but can caps have been in, 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 in different countries part of the uh, part of a toolbox used in emergency situation to uh, safeguard the quality of service? Um, well, in general, I cannot answer it. I must say that caps uh, were in place also in the Netherlands to, to try with, with senders to get to an understanding to, mm -hmm. to uh, because the, the, sometimes the, the, the whole process was really overcooking, so to speak. It, it was, there was too much, uh, we couldn't handle it. Um, and sometimes if you, if you uh, connect to, to send us big companies, etc., you can, can try to, to get a more even flow, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you put the question, I, I don't have a, a concrete answer to that. No, sorry. <laughs> Understood. Understood. And um, what about the wider question? This is the last question we have from the um, from the audience Q and A. On could it be possible to define specific targets on quality of service for a situation such as pandemic? I mean, force majeure gives a way out, but do do we need specific targets for a situation like a pandemic? Do we need uh, some some other way to balance that reliability, even in difficult times, or is force majeure the only the only way to to achieve this. Perhaps I start with you, Joachim, and then back to, to, to Hans. Yeah, of, of course, it, it, it would be possible to have a, uh, 
some kind of uh, uh, alternative system to, to put in uh, in these kind of situations. But uh, I, I, as I have uh, learned from the, my colleagues in Europe, uh, the force majeure uh, was enough at least to handle this situation. So, but, but, but perhaps uh, it's worth thinking of uh, such uh, an alternative uh, uh, as a complement to the force majeure. Uh, I think that could be interesting to think of uh, in the upcoming works that are, that, that, that are going to be done in this area. So. Thank you. Um, Hans, your thoughts? Yes, I must say I completely agree with what uh, Ms. Uh, with, with Joachim said, because uh, one of my, okay, the force uh, pandemic is a force majeure situation, but the pinpointing uh, of the exact consequences is very hard to do, actually. So some leniency and some, some flexibility in thinking how to handle the uh, this uh, in the relations between the regul regul uh, regul regulator and uh, designated company is, I think, is is much needed. The most important thing is that you do everything to continue the uh, service. That's that's the most important thing. Uh, and well, if you if you look at the targets and if they are met or not, just what I said, I think. Um, um, Reliability is, is more important than speed. So a little, a little bit out of the box thinking is needed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We don't know which box, but it needs to be outside of the current one. <laughs> and uh, I guess there is also a bit of dissatisfaction. You mentioned in the beginning with the concept of first majeure. It is not like a flooding. It is not like an event that is uh, can be circumscribed. So that's maybe a... It's not something that can go and, you know, where somebody can go and clean a database in a precise way that is not disputable. So this is um, this is a uh, part of, uh, of, uh, of the lesson learned. Um, so um, this is uh, this is um, helpful. And um, we've now reached uh, one hour. We have additional time if needed, but I also know we've covered quite a lot of ground. So I'd like to uh, offer a last opportunity to each of the speakers before thanking them for any final uh, remarks before closing. Uh, perhaps starting with you, uh, Joachim, any final factors and considerations based on the reflection today and the, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the broader question of, uh, of regulatory responses to the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, well, uh, no, it has been a very uh, interesting discussion, and uh, I think uh, both regulators and uh, operators uh, have quite common goals in, in this uh, area to, to get uh, the post postal system working in a good way. So. I think uh, there, there is some issues to be dealt with uh, and we will look at them. So uh, I think we have some more important discussions coming up uh, in this area, but uh, uh, well, I, I, I stop with that. Thank you. Thank you, Joachim. Hans, final remarks. Yeah, thank you. Well. I must say I've, I've been able to share most of my insights on this, so uh, thank you very much, but uh, I, I don't have uh, any big uh, final remarks at this moment. Sorry. <laughs> then allow me to thank you both, uh, Hans, Joachim, thanks for taking the, the time and being uh, with us uh, today. Thank you for the, uh, to the uh, UPU uh, International Bureau for hosting this uh, webinar series, which uh, draws to a close now. Thank you for all the audience participants for uh, questions and, and, and your time in, in uh, throughout the three, the three um, webinars on the COVID-19 postal regulatory uh, responses. This is a topic that will be covered as part of the, of the forthcoming um, UPU um, postal uh, regulatory panorama um, publication, which covers a broader set of topics. And, and um, so I think it is, it is great to have a, professional and practitioner uh, conversation with policymakers, uh, operators, uh, uh, and different different viewpoints on on uh, on uh, how the postal sector has uh, evolved and responded and 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 and, su 
supported the, 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 the resilience during the, the pandemic. And we're still learning from this. I think it's, it's been a great privilege to hear from many different experts across the world. And uh, this is, uh, it's, it's not the end uh, uh, in terms of, of learning from, from this. And I think that we would need to remain to be curious and ask good questions and support the, the um, uh, both policymakers and operators in, in, in getting the best decisions. Um, with this, I would say thank you all and, uh, and uh, suggest that we draw the event to a close. Thank you very much and have a good rest of the day. Thank you, Bruno.